Hey there, everybody. We are here at Sea Otter Classic 2023. And in this video, I'm going to ask bike industry folks these two questions. What is a bike trend that you personally would like to see take off? Second question is uh, gravel bikes, are they fat or here to stay and why? So let's go find out what they think. All right, so we've been asking uh, everyone at the show two questions. First one is, what is a bike trend that you personally would like to see take off? Sub $2,000 bikes, actually, <laughs> yeah. Uh, the longer I get into bikes, the more mid-range I become. I think old school randoneering. I'm a big fan of like the old, um, you know, you've got like old steel frames, racks, and, and that kind of stuff. I, I'm a big fan of that kind of riding. I know you ride like Caradice style bags and things. Cycle trucks. Cycle trucks. Specifically Ahern cycle trucks. I'm a fan of cargo cycling. I really, I have, you know, I have one. I've had one for years. I use it all the time. It's the bike I ride the most. I, I feel like every time I come to Interbike or Eurobike or Sea Otter, it's like about to take off. You see it like here and there, but it just hasn't. I would like to see the trend of people not worrying about weight as much. <laughs> I would like people to, to focus on functionality over weight. I, I do that in my own riding, and I think that probably a lot of people would feel that way if they weren't constantly told that weight is so important and that like I think we get obsessed with things like grams and I don't think a lot of people know what a gram actually is <laughs> so we think about 100 grams as this like immense amount of weight and it's like a small amount of a water bottle it's already happening but e-bikes I think e-bikes like you you get on one and they're they're so much more intuitive than you expect them to be I like bikes that are usable and aren't necessarily too flashy but there's a kind of a uh, usability, utility aspect to them. I kind of feel like there should be more of that. We actually joke about this a lot. I think potentially um, get a little more, get a little more okay with, with screwing things up on your bike. Um, go for it, give it a shot. If you screw up, then go to your local mechanic. They're incredible and they would be happy to walk you through it. Um, it already has, I think, gravel bike. Okay. Yeah, uh, we love the gravel and well, off, off road, I say gravel, but off road. I think it's much more accessible, a lot more safer. You know, if you're jumping on road straight away, you dealing with traffic and cars. That's a little bit off-putting, but you know, off-road and also the mounds and the fresh air. I really love the whole green aspect. Okay. So that's where my personal view wants to go as well. So we want to make these in the future greener. Mm -hmm. So you know, imagine making a bike out of hemp or bio resin that, when you're finished with it, you could just bury it in the ground and it will become a compost. <laughs> Like we do our right to repair stuff and I would love to see that with with other companies like being able to replace just one piece instead of needing to buy an entirely new assembly or an entirely new whatever and you know it's better for the environment cuts down on cost for the end user um, I mean I want that more than just in cycling like I want them everything rim brakes I'm rim kidding back <laughs> take back off on there uh, a trend that I'd like to see take off oh here's one here's one I really feel like in the US popularized bells on bike paths. So many people are too shy to say on your left or they kind of mumble it. Let's just use bells and everybody can comfortably do that even if you're shy or whatever it is. And it's just good, so bells on bikes, normalize it. Beal to, to people uh, in, in America says tiny, small, weak, slow. And I think that that's something that's really changing as like mini velo and micro mobility becomes more of a thing. I think the bike industry will start to recognize the inherent value of a more compact bicycle that has features that are designed for urban living, but also can go out and explore, can travel and see the world. Um, so I think that small wheel trend, that compact trend, I think it's already taking off. I'd love for it to take off more. It's going to be on brand, but I really like the basket packing. Like, I just think it's like so easy and it's chill, <laughs> yeah. you know, but being able to just throw stuff in there, have your snacks, like, you know, whatever you want in reach is fun. So I do want to see more of that. Um, otherwise, bike fishing is yeah. the one. I always want more bike fishing. Uh, the next question is gravel bikes. Are they a fad or here to stay and why? I think they're here to stay because um, road cycling is kind of so far away from gravel riding at this point. The, the clearances are getting bigger and bigger, but it's it's still distinctly different from mountain biking. So yeah, I think it's safe to stay. And I think they're here to stay. Yeah. I don't, maybe, maybe people won't continue to call them gravel bikes, but honestly, like no matter where you are, whether it's Iowa or Montana or I mean Florida, Arkansas, like there are gravel roads everywhere, and there's less traffic, and the accessibility is just so easy for people. I just don't see why they're gonna go, how, why they could go away. Yeah, they're absolutely here to stay for sure. Um, just the ability to ride out of your house on pavement, hit trails, 
and go home on the same bike is really awesome to me. I think a lot of people really resonate with that. So yeah, absolutely here to stay. They're here to stay. I mean, I've got kids and I mean, a lot of people are texting and driving and you can say what you can say about bike paths along roads, but I just feel safer if you're gonna have a big event is have it on gravel. Just have it on gravel for safety reasons. Gravel bikes have been around for a really long time. I mean, they got, they, I, you know, the 50s, 40s, like, I don't, you know, the first bikes were, I would I would call those gravel bikes. So, yeah. yeah, I think gravel bike is probably the most durable type of bike. Uh, you want something, you know, it has a wider tire, not too wide. You can ride all over the place. You can ride wherever you want. Yeah, gra whatever you call that kind of bike, if you call it a gravel bike, call it whatever you want. That, that to me is just a bike. And yes, bikes are bikes are here to stay. Uh, they're definitely here to stay. And I personally, I think they're here to stay because it is it's going back to something I remember riding as a kid. And I think that's maybe true for a lot of people where it's the bike that takes you wherever you want to go. So I could commute on the bike. I could ride around a neighborhood. I could ride it like on the trails. I could ride it on a mountain bike trail if I want to and kind of get crazy. And so I think everyone's flavor of their mountain bike or their gravel bike, flat bar, drop bar, racing, partying, getting together, like that's the cool thing about gravel is that it brings all the different personalities together. And I think everyone can kind of have their own version of it. Whereas in other disciplines, maybe you're stuck in a version. So I think it's here to stay and maybe the names will change, but we'll have these kind of bikes like for a while now. So. Term is probably a fad, but I think the larger tire, more usable platform, like, you know, essentially a road bike or a drop bar bike or a comfortable bike that has bigger tires. That seems to be a thing that will go for it. I don't think anyone, in fact, the other day I saw like a 25 millimeter tire and I was like, whoa, what is that? And it's only 25, they used to make 19. All right, um, gravel bikes are definitely a fad. They are also definitely here to stay. Um, I think it's because road riding is incredible. Uh, I love both road and mountain and gravel. Um, but it of course can be dangerous with cars and it can be perceived as dangerous. Uh, Whereas gravel removes you from that harm and you're not on the open road, but you still get to be on a fast drop bar bike uh, that's quick and agile and fun and you can go explore uh, and do big miles and not have to worry about cars. They're here to stay um, because gravel is accessible. It's, it's everywhere and you know, I personally like use my gravel bike mostly like for multi-surface rides. You know, I mean, I'm, my ride for 30 miles might be 20 miles of pavement, eight miles of gravel, maybe two miles of single track. It's fun to have a bike that I can just do that and like head out and like, yeah, I do want to hit that trail really quick before I get back to the <laughs> pavement or whatever. I think they're here to stay. Yeah. Gravel bikes are here to stay because people want to have fun. <laughs> you know, people want to have fun and drink beer and go explore and like see the world and be like chill in nature. And I think for all those reasons, um, gravel is here to stay. I think it's more accessible in many ways than mountain biking because it's less extreme, but I still think it offers the sort of fun loving community aspect of mountain biking. So uh, I hope it doesn't become like more and more exclusive. I hope it remains like a more democratic and like accessible world. Gravel bikes are here to stay because marketing companies love them. <laughs> um, <laughs> so they're definitely here to stay for that. Um, but they'll keep evolving, you know, like ATVs where we're now getting up to like two twos more common and stuff like that. It's just the next generation. Um, I mean, our company's in Bend. If you've ever been to Bend, we've got a ton of mountain bike trails that are really fun on a gravel bike or an ATV bike. <laughs> Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video on what the bike industry thinks is going to be the next hottest trends. Uh, if you enjoyed it, be sure to hit that subscribe button. We have a ton more videos coming out of Sea Otter. And as always, keep the supple side down.